Hello and welcome to the twelfth video of my Pi game programming. Now, what I wanted to do this time was focus around setting up some health bars. So, if you run our game again, then when we actually shoot the enemies, you don't know how many times I've hit these enemies. Like, we have no idea. So, this one is going to take one more, and then this one still has what? Three? Yeah. So we have no idea how many hits these guys take, because they don't have any signal to tell the health bars. We know how many hits we have because our lives go down over here, but the enemies really need some kind of health bar in order to actually, you know, give us some registration that we're about to kill them so we know how strong they are and how much health they have left so we know how many hits they're going to take before they go down. So it would really be helpful if we actually had some information about that. So that's what we're going to work on. now. How it's going to work is I'm actually going to run this thing over here called example testing because this has a small little environment that I created just for the purpose of this. It's kind of like an example. So what it's going to be like is when it takes damage or when I left click it, as you can see I took damage. That's just some debug info that I gave myself. Every time I click this, it's losing some health. And eventually when it loses all of its health, it dies. So that's pretty much the exact same thing we're going to do. We're going to do a very similar design where when it's at full health, it has no health bar. When it takes its first bit of damage, a green health bar shows up with red kind of showing, you know, where the health is not. And then, of course, when it gets down to its last point and you hit it the last time with damage, it just dies. That's what we're going to work on. Now, to get started with this example, I'm actually going to be using a different class because it's kind of easier to explain if you see everything. So let me just go over this class. It's the example testing. And I'm just going to kind of show you how this is working. So I just have some colors. I have standard game window for Pi game. Then I have my box, which I'll get back to. I have box being added to a sprite group. So it's being drawn from a sprite group, meaning we can basically kill it. When it loses all of its health, we just say self.kill and it goes away. We have a standard game loop with, you know, waiting for Pi game dot quit. Fill it with white update and then draw the sprite or the one box in this scene and then tick time and I'll just run this so you guys can see what this does as it currently stands very similar to the other example except I've taken away the health bar so when I click on this box all it's gonna say is I took damage but it's not gonna give me any other information and then after 10 clicks it goes away and I'll show you how that's working so the box object is a Pi game sprite of course it has its standard image in rectangle sets its position to the center of this game scene. It has a max health or HP of 10.0. This is important being a double or a float instead of an integer. If this was just 10, it wouldn't work the way it's supposed to. But this needs to be a float because we're doing some division. And then of course it needs to have a max HP value so we know what its max HP is. So we have max HP is 10 and then its current HP is going to be equal to the 10. Uh, Self.has clicked is something I haven't done yet but I'll kind of explain the reason it's there. I have a function in this called take damage. It loses one health point, and if the health is less than or equal to zero, it kills it. That's all take damage does, something we've seen before. And then update. Update gets the current, the cursor position, and it also gets whether the cursor is being clicked. And then I'm asking if the cursor is clicked, meaning if left click this happen, and self dot has clicked is false, meaning not basically is the inverse of it. So I'm saying if the left mouse button has been clicked and we haven't clicked yet, then what you're going to do is say we've clicked. So, you know, it just, it's a trigger so that it doesn't happen constantly. If that's not implemented, then when I run this and I click and hold down the left mouse button, if I look at the console, I click, it only happens once because it's just acting as a latch. Normally when mouse button zero, is down, it'll return, you know, true every single time, and this would happen every single frame. But the has clicked is just being used as a latch, and I'll probably show that in the future. And then I'm saying when we click, all you're going to do is if the cursor is between the rectangles left side and right side, using some of those other rectangle functions, and the cursor is between the top and bottom of the rectangle, then take damage and print some debug information. And then, of course, when you're done clicking, meaning once click zero, once the left mouse button has been released, set has clicked to false. That's, again, just part of the trigger. We're going to use this class as our baseline for starting with the health bar. So we'll get started on that now. So the health bar needs 
three major things in its initializer that we're going to use. First, it needs some type of self dot um, health bar. I'm just going to use HB, and this is going to be width, and I'm going to set that equal to since this box is 100 by 100, we're just going to set its width equal to 80, and then self dot health bar height is going to be equal to I don't know 15 should be good. And then I actually need, you know, the real health bar. So self.healthbar base is what I'm going to call it, is going to equal a pygame.surface of the self.healthbar width and self.healthbar height. So the health bar base is going to be the thing that um, we're building right now. Now the base is the red part of the health bar. The actual health bar is going to be the green part of the health bar. And the green part of the health bar is the thing that's changing. That's why we're not drawing it here in the initializer. In the initializer, we're just setting up the red part of the health bar along with two values that we need to know for the red health bar. So that's all we need for the initialize in the initialize statement. Now, when we actually update the health bar is going to be not in the update function, but in take damage. So when we lose HP, what we're going to say is self dot, um, how would I put this, draw health bar. And of course, that's just going to be an internal function, which we'll define right now. So define draw health bar. And what draw health bar is going to do is it's going to draw the green part on to the actual image. So the first thing we need to do is get some width value. So I'm just going to say width because this is only going to be inside this function that we need to know it. And the width is going to be equal to the self, or I should say, yeah, self dot HP divided by self dot max HP. This is going to give us the ratio basically of how much health we have left. So out of 10 points of health, if we're at six, then we're going to do 6 divided by 10 and get 0.6, or 60% of the normal width. So we're going to take this number. I'm just going to put it in parentheses so that, you know, guarantee this calculation happens first. And then it's going to be this number, which would be, in the example, 0.6, or 60%. And we're going to multiply that by self dot health bar width. That way we know how much this green part is going to be. And then of course, for the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this to an integer because width is going to be in pixels since we're going to be putting it inside a pie game surface inside one of these. So the width needs to be an integer, either that or it's just going to, you know, get dropped out anyway as a cast um, when it auto casts because integers, you can't have 0.5 pixels is what I mean. So we're just going to cast it for clarity. So that's our width of our green health bar. And now that we have the width of our green health bar, we can actually create the health bar. So I'm going to call this um, just health bar, or I, yeah, we'll just call it health bar. That is going to be equal to a pie game surface. And its width is going to be the width, and its height is going to be self.healthbar height. Same height as the green one. And now what we're going to do to it is we're going to take the green one, which is health bar, HB, and we're going to blit it to the health bar base. So self.healthbar base dot blit health bar or health bar at the position of zero, zero. Since they should be the exact same height, the only difference is going to be their width. So if we blit it at zero, zero, this one will completely cover the red bar, except for, you know, however wide it is. And then once we have that surface created, all we have to do is say self dot image dot blit self dot health bar base at wherever we want the health bar base. And since it's 15 tall, uh, we know the box that we're drawing this to is 100. So if it's 15 tall, 85 would put it at the bottom. I'm going to put it at 80, or sorry, um, 80 is the second argument, so 80 in the height, and in the width is going to be 10, because 
our health bar is 80 wide and our actual image is 100 wide so putting it at 10 will give it 10 padding on both sides and this is all we need we just need um, one more thing because the health bar this won't actually look right unless we redraw the red part of the health bar before we blit the initial piece so once we create the health bar all we have to say is self dot health bar base dot fill red and I suppose we also have to say um, health bar dot fill green just so everything gets colored and now what should happen is because what we're doing is we're creating the width which is how many pixels wide the green part of the health bar be, should be which is the percentage of the health difference between its max health so at half health it'll be half the distance and then we're going to take that create a, the actual green health bar fill it with green of that width then we're going to take the health bar base refill it blit the green part on the red health bar and then blit the red health bar which now has both elements red and green onto our actual image and all of that's going to happen every time we take damage so every time we take damage we're going to draw a smaller and smaller health bar so let's run this and it should be working so now when we click it we'll get the debug i took damage and you'll see this green health bar going down until of course we click it 10 times and it dies now what's nice about this set of code is it's completely well aside from its positioning i guess it's completely independent of the health that we add so say instead of you know uh, 10 health we want something like 20 or maybe 25 let's go with 25 see how this looks let's run it and I'll bring this fully on screen now when we click it you'll notice it takes 25 clicks and the health bar gradually goes down until it's destroyed that's pretty easy code to do this draw health bar thing so I'm actually gonna copy this so control copy and we're gonna bring this over to our enemy so we have take damage, we have stock player, you know, right here looks like a good spot. And I'm just going to paste this in. And of course, make sure the tabbing is all right, since that is something that Python uh, needs to have spe specified, is to make sure tabbing is correct. Uh, healthbar.fill utils.green. Um, fix up, of course, all this stuff, utils.red. Make sure the colors are right. I also need to change up a couple things um, about the health bar itself. Let's go back here and grab these three variables. Copy them as well, just, you know, saving time here. And find our initializer. Add them here. And of course now we just have to set everything up. So this surface is only 50 by 50. The enemy is only 50 by 50. So the width should be something like 40 should be okay. And the height probably should only be, you know, maybe 8. 8 should be good. 40 and 8, those are both divisible by 5, so should be okay. Once those are set up, all we have to do is come down here to draw health bar. Make sure everything is okay. Health bar blitz to this. Where are we going to blit it? Well, I'm going to blit it at position 5, so it's centered. And since our thing is 8 tall, I'm going to give it 2 padding, or 4 padding at the bottom, so what, 38 will be my Y position? Yeah, I believe that's okay. And then in take damage, all we do is after we lower health, we say self.drawHealthBar. And now our enemies in our main game should be using the exact same function for the health bar. And something went terribly wrong. Width equals int. Enemy object has no attribute HP. Oh, there's an issue. That makes perfect sense. So the enemy doesn't actually have health. So self dot HP or HP max equals 10.0 self.hp equals self.hp max. Just want to make sure those are the same. Max HP and HP, okay, I'm not spelling these the same. HP and max HP. There we go. Self.max HP. Got to make sure the spelling is right, otherwise things will not work properly. 
And now what we should see is our enemies are not quite drawing themselves right, but that's okay. We'll debug what this is. We're just drawing a green box entirely. That's not what we want. We don't want it to just be green all the time. They do, in fact, lose health. So what is the problem? Oh, that's a completely easy fix. We're just using the wrong health, because we do have a health, but we're not taking damage on the correct health. Now, we didn't have a self.hp, but we did have a self.health, which we no longer need, because we're not using that particular value for the enemy. We're using self.hp, and all I had to do was switch out the one that was in take damage, so now HP lowers its maximum amount. So now, it should be working. And we get another crash. What is up with this? Enemy... Oh, we're again checking the wrong health. If self.health, self.hp, just have to convert it, and everything should be okay. There we go. Now you can see these nice little green bars on the enemies that tell us how strong they are. And of course, in this um, changing it up, I managed to double their health, so they're significantly tougher to beat. Which means it's just going to take a few more shots to kill them. But now we have working health bars. And I suppose we could get a health bar for us working too, but eh, it doesn't really feel necessary. We have our lives over here, which are still pretty hard to see. I'll probably end up bolding these at some point, just so it's um, easier to read the values, since also the red background doesn't help. Of course, our space bar still works, so we can fill out our message. So yeah, there we go. Now we have working health bars for our enemies, which will be good if we want to start adding more enemies into this game, so that we can start actually, you know, getting an idea on different types of enemies. Maybe we want an enemy with twice as much health, or maybe we want the enemies to have a random amount of health between like 5 and 15, so that they're not all the same. You know, any level of things, or maybe we want certain characters in the alphabet to deal more damage. I guess that's a possibility too. So when we actually, you know, get all of our ammo inside our player, maybe some of them do different amounts of damage than others. These are all possibilities that we can do with this. It's not that difficult to implement some of them. But at least we have health bars. We can check the health of our enemies, the strength of them, so we know how much it's going to take before we can destroy them, which will be helpful later on. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you next time.